Thanks to all of you for uh, foregoing lunch long enough to listen to me blather on about something or other here. We're going to talk about Bonnie and Clyde in Dallas County. This will be kind of a, a, a quick overview of the places that uh, either still exist or used to exist uh, where uh, things relative to Bonnie and Clyde took place. And we'll start with uh, West Dallas and Eagle Ford, which is a good place to start. The, the irony of uh, Bonnie and Clyde and West Dallas in particular is they're so associated with having been from West Dallas when neither one of them were from West Dallas, actually. Uh, Clyde Barrow was born in Ellis County. And uh, when his family moved to Dallas County, uh, almost immediately he went to live with his, one of his older sisters in Oak Lawn. Uh, never did live in West Dallas. His, uh, his father and mother and uh, younger brother and sister lived in West Dallas. And so he would visit them frequently, even when he was wanted by the law. Bonnie was born in West Texas and at age four uh, came to Dallas County. Uh, she actually was raised in Dallas County, uh, but she, it was near Eagle Ford, actually, not West Dallas. Uh, so we'll, st we'll, we'll start with this uh, not guaranteed to be strictly uh, proportionate map of West Dallas to show you uh, the communities that once were part of uh, what is now Singleton Boulevard, used to be called Eagle Ford Road. Um, over on this side would, it represents uh, Dallas, downtown Dallas, Trinity River, and then there would be this unincorporated neighborhood called West Dallas. It was just referred to as West Dallas. It was not part of Dallas. It was not a municipality at all. Uh, it was not a town, a city. Um, it had no elections. It was just a place in Dallas County. Uh, not far down uh, Eagle Ford Road was uh, a town called Cement, and it actually was an incorporated municipality with its own school district. And then further down the road was uh, a company town called Cement City, which was associated with Trinity Portland. Uh, how many of you all remember Trinity Portland way out there uh, where uh, Lowe's is located? and? dress barn or whatever else is out there. All of that used to be Trinity Portland and, and they had a, a company town there and it was called Cement City. And for years and years, probably still to this day, Cement City gets conflated with cement, which is, seems like it would be easy to do. And then uh, right next to the company town is Eagle Ford, which was uh, another municipality that had been there since the 19th century. And it was situated at a point where you could cross the Trinity River. So it, that's why it was called Eagle Ford. Um, and, and then uh, uh, Eagle Ford Road ran from downtown Dallas out to Eagle Ford. You could cross the river there. Eventually, a bridge was built there that connected Eagle Ford with Irving, Texas. Uh, today, of course, Eagle Ford Road is called Singleton. Uh, and Today, Singleton continues straight on uh, and goes a little bit past Walton Walker Freeway there. Uh, and all of this has been eliminated. But if you look on a map, if you go to Google Maps or something, and, and look at uh, Irving, the city of Irving, uh, down near where it's close to the Trinity River, and you'll see a, a road called Singleton. And that used to be the connection that no longer is connected anymore there. Anyway, in, in these areas, uh, uh, Clyde Barrow's family was located here. Bonnie's family was located uh, right on Eagle Ford Road, uh, not far from Cement City, and was part of uh, the Eagle Ford district there. So uh, B Bonnie starts out uh, near Eagle Ford. Uh, actually starts out in West Texas, but at age four, she moves to near Eagle Ford. And uh, she goes to school at this place, uh, Eagle Ford School Number 49, which still stands today. It's on Chalk Hill Road, uh, you can, and, and it's, it's been beautifully uh, rebuilt and refurbished uh, to look like the, the way it did originally. Uh, once years ago, when I was uh, doing bus tours, a 90-year-old woman was one of the people on the tour, and she had taught Bonnie at this school. 
And then uh, after, after that grade school, that was a grade school, uh, Bonnie went for one year and one month to Cement High School uh, in the little town of Cement. Uh, to, to, uh, Cement w was located in the area of West Commerce and Hampton today. Uh, and uh, this photograph of the old high school, Bo Bonnie went there for her uh, uh, ninth grade and then in uh, 10th grade she went there for one month and uh, then she got married. She married a fellow student named Roy Thornton. Uh, she was just a few days shy of her 16th birthday when she was married, and uh, he wasn't much older. Uh, but that marriage didn't last long, and uh, Bonnie uh, t uh, uh, went to work uh, m mostly as a waitress uh, around Dallas. Uh, she worked at two cafes in downtown Dallas, and she's pictured here in one of those cafes. It, it's supposedly it's Marco's. I'm not really sure if it's Marco's. And then uh, she also uh, worked in this building, this strip shop, which still stands today. Uh, she worked in this space here. It was called Hargraves Cafe. So uh, in her late teens uh, and into her early 20s, she was a, a uh, a waitress uh, in the Dallas area, especially downtown Dallas. None of those, of course, are in West Dallas, which we started out talking about. Uh, Hargraves Cafe, which still stands, the building still stands today, it was at Swiss Avenue. Marco's Cafe doesn't exist anymore. It was on Main Street. And then she worked uh, last at a place called Courthouse Cafe. Um, uh, Ted Hinton, in his book, uh, names this cafe as the American Cafe. Um, I never could find an American Cafe uh, listed anywhere in any city directory uh, f between 1929 and 1936. There was an all-American Cafe. It was on Houston Street. And there's a photograph of it. And sometimes a photo of that cafe is used, and they crop the all off the American Cafe, which uh, anybody I ever interviewed that actually knew Bonnie Parker, they said she worked at a place called the Courthouse Cafe, and there was a Courthouse Cafe. It was just a few doors away from the Big Red Courthouse uh, on uh, the 100 block of Jefferson, uh, which no longer exists anymore. Uh, the uh, uh, Crowley Courts building is standing there right now. So uh, uh, West Dallas uh, and uh, Clyde Barrow now. Uh, Bonnie Parker meets Clyde Barra in West Dallas. Uh, she meets Clyde Barra at the home of mutual friends. Clyde was uh, friends with this one fella, and uh, his sister was married to Bonnie's brother. And eventually, Bonnie and Clyde met at this house, which was in West Dallas. It was on Henry Street. The house no longer stands. Everything goes away. Everything disintegrates eventually, uh, whether intentionally or uh, unintentionally, but she meets uh, Clyde Barra in West Dallas. Uh, Clyde Barra's family uh, came from Ellis County uh, after uh, living in many different counties in Texas, mostly as sharecroppers, but came uh, to Dallas from Ellis County and lived in a couple of free campgrounds. Uh, the first free campground uh, they lived in was beneath the Houston Street Viaduct. And then the second free campground was along Muncie Street in West Dallas. And they lived there long enough to build a permanent house there. Uh, and uh, that uh, was all along this, this part, uh, right next to the railroad track there. Um, Marie Barra, Clyde's younger sister, told me that uh, uh, Clyde and his younger brother, L.C., would, would catch rides on the train and go to Fort Worth for the day. They'd try and convince her to go. She said she'd get all the way up to the tracks and then chicken out and go back home. And uh, uh, Clyde went to school in Dallas County at Sydney Lanier High School, uh, Marie said, for just a couple of weeks. And then he got a job at Brown Cracker and Candy Company. Uh, but this, that smiling face there is Clyde Barra. And then uh, uh, Clyde's connection to West Dallas was the filling station, which was located at the corner of Eagle Ford Road and Borger. And um, it's gone now, too, as many of you probably know. Um, 
but uh, this is a photograph of Henry Barra, Clyde's father, standing in front of the service station. Part of the structure of the service station um, is, is from the house uh, that the Barras lived in uh, in that free campground. And that house was moved to this location and then the service station part was put in the front there. It, it had, they had a well on this property and they sold water to uh, most of the neighbors. So they were pretty well known in West Dallas. So this building here was, was pretty much uh, the main connection for Clyde Barra to West Dallas there. Uh, uh, Clyde Barra was very close to his parents, especially his mother, and made it a point to visit as often as possible. No matter how much he was wanted by the law, he made it a point to uh, come into Dallas to visit, especially his mother. Um, in, in this house in the back, uh, of course, Clyde's mother and father lived there, uh, but also his younger sister Marie lived there, and his younger brother L.C. lived there. And for a time, Blanche lived there as well. And, and th this is Blanche with uh, her dog, uh, Snowball. Uh, this is the dog that ran away during the Joplin gunfight and that Blanche went looking for. Uh, the, the, uh, over the years, the filling station, well, it, it, it became abandoned, but it still had that same awning over the front of it. And uh, the, the portion in the back, this is where the family lived. And then uh, after Clyde uh, was paroled from prison uh, in 1932, he helped his father build this uh, garage apartment back here in the back. And all of this is gone now. Uh, Clyde was very close to his family, uh, his immediate family and his extended family here. So uh, this is a, a visit uh, when uh, Clyde was very much wanted by the law and he's visiting uh, some family members. Uh, if you can't pick out which one's Clyde, that's him there. Uh, he, he looks like he's about 12 in this photograph to me, um, but he's actually in his 20s and, uh, and is wanted by the law all over the nation at this point. Uh, this is something Clyde Barrow knew. He knew he looked very young. And, and uh, it, more than one person I, I interviewed that actually had some dealings with Clyde said, I had no idea who that was. At first, I thought it was a school kid because he looked like, and he knew that, and he used it to his advantage. He could be really, really, really charming and talk his way out of situations. He did that more than once. If that didn't work, he'd get the drop on whoever it was, and he'd take them for a thousand mile ride and drop them by the side of the road. If that didn't work, he'd try and drive away as fast as he could, and he was pretty good at that. If that didn't work, then the guns came out. And that, that's when this Clyde would, would become uh, uh, manifest there. So uh, you can't see it because uh, this uh, armature here is cutting off the top there, but what that says at the top is Sims Oil Refinery. There, was an, there were several oil refineries uh, along Eagle Ford Road, and one of them was Sims Oil Refinery, and these three guys uh, decided to rob the payroll there. They were going to go in at night, and they were going to uh, uh, get the lone night watchman uh, a hostage, and then they were going to go into the office and break into the safe and take the payroll. Uh, 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 Raymond Hamilton, Ralph Fultz, and Clyde Barrow went in there. Ralph was the safe guy. He knew how to crack safes, and so they got the drop on the night watchman. They went in, they cracked the safe, and there's nothing in the safe. The money hadn't arrived yet. So that, that was one of their first forays into that. At the same time, these three guys were robbing uh, stores, burglarizing them along Greenville Avenue, and they had a fourth uh, cohort, a Dallas police officer who was watching out front, uh, and they would pay the Dallas police officer off. Uh, so here's Sims Oil Refinery. Uh, they uh, actually uh, they, they, they parked away from the refinery. They cut through the fence of the refinery and walked to the office building. And uh, uh, even after all of that, they got away with nothing. Oh, uh, by the way, that uh, is located uh, very close to the corner of uh, Singleton Boulevard and Hampton Boulevard, uh, near where um, 
uh, Habitat for Humanities is located today. And then there's a shooting at 501 County Avenue. Fortunately, I, I put the, the sign down here at the bottom so it didn't get blocked by the armature up here. Uh, 507 County Avenue, today it's 3111 North Winneka. Uh, this building's no longer there either. It's, it's been moved off the property and, and is in Tyler, I'm, I'm told. But on January 6th, uh, several uh, officers, two, uh, two uh, deputies from Tarrant County, uh, two deputies from uh, Dallas County, because this is in Dallas County, um, a Texas Ranger and a Tarrant County uh, Assistant District Attorney took over this house. Now, this house was uh, uh, rented by two uh, uh, of the sisters of one of Clyde Barrett's cohorts, Raymond Hamilton, and it was a bit of a safe house in the area. And uh, the Tarrant County officials, they were looking for a bank robber. They weren't looking for Clyde Barrow. They were looking for another bank robber and uh, thought he might come to this house on this particular night, but Clyde Barrow showed up instead because he had a deal going, uh, trying to get Raymond Hamilton, uh, his buddy, broken out of a jail down in Hillsboro. So Clyde Barrow shows up. There's, there's uh, two officers in the house. There's two officers on the porch in the back and the assistant district attorney and the Texas Ranger are in the house as well. Um, one of the uh, Dallas County officers is sitting in this window here, and he sees a, a car come up. It's almost midnight, a li little bit past midnight. Comes, pulls up, uh, doesn't stop though, and then takes off, goes around the corner. Then that car shows up again, and pulls up, almost stops, but then just keeps on going. And then it pulls up a third time. And as it's coming up the street, uh, this officer sitting in this door, he notices a red light in this window here. And he asks one of Hamilton's sisters, what's that red light for? And says, it's a night light for my kids. And he said, well, turn it off. And so she turned it off and the car stopped this time. And this man got out from behind the, the wheel and approached uh, uh, the porch here when he spotted this guy sitting in the window and he opened up his overcoat and had a shotgun and he uh, fired a shot into this window. Did not hit that officer, but uh, it, the sound of the shot brought the two officers on the back porch around to the front. And the first one around the front was a deputy sheriff named Malcolm Davis from Fort Worth from Tarrant County. And he was shot right there on the porch, shot and killed. This is a reenactment the next morning. Uh, and uh, the one playing the part of Clyde Barra here is uh, uh, Chief Deputy, uh, uh, b -b 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 Oh, later became sheriff. Why can't I think of his name? Oh, he was sheriff during the Kennedy assassination. Who was that? Bill Decker. Bill Decker, yeah. He was chief deputy at the time. Bill Decker's playing the part of uh, Clyde Barrow there. And another deputy's playing the part of Malcolm Davis, who was killed uh, by that shotgun blast there. That looks like a duplex. Was that a duplex? Yes, it was a duplex, yeah. And so Clyde Barrow was uh, the gunman. Bonnie was in the car, and so was a, a teenager named W.D. Jones. Uh, W.D. Jones pulled out a pistol and started firing at the house, and Clyde Barrow standing between the house and the gun. Uh, and Bonnie tells uh, uh, W.D. to stop shooting, but uh, I don't know if it's still there or not, but for years and years and years, I have a photograph of the bullet hole from, it was a 41 caliber uh, pistol he was firing as a bullet hole in the, in the front of the house. So the, these three were there. Uh, Clyde, after the shooting, uh, took off down the alleyway and uh, uh, around the side of the house, took off down the alleyway. Bonnie got behind the wheel and met Clyde out on Eagle Ford Road and then, then they and W.D. Jones uh, drove off. Uh, there was this uh, system of roads and bridges that connected um, uh, Dallas, Eagle Ford Road, Eagle Ford, and Irving, Texas, uh, that kind of snaked through the Trinity River bottoms. Uh, there, were, uh, th there was uh, this bridge here that uh, crossed one of the main channels of the Trinity River, and then there were a series of smaller little wooden bridges uh, that, that crossed 
little bits, little tributaries here and there, and eventually you wound up in Irving. This was a favorite place for outlaws uh, in Dallas County, including Clyde Barrow. Uh, Clyde Barrow is known to meet his family uh, down here in the Trinity River bottoms uh, uh, frequently. Uh, he was, again, very close to his family. This is a photograph, uh, Clyde Barrow, uh, Bonnie's sister, Billy, uh, Marie Barrow, uh, Bonnie's mother, Bonnie, uh, Elsie Barrow, and uh, Cumi Barrow, uh, Clyde's mother. And uh, this photograph here, uh, Marie Barrow told me this photograph was taken down in the bottoms during one of these uh, 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 meetings. All that's left, uh, are, there's a couple of remnants of this little system of roads down there. Well, one remnant is this piling, uh, uh, which crossed the, uh, one of the main channels of the Trinity River. But then my favorite is this thing, which is still there today, unless somebody's carted it off to Tyler now or something. I don't know. It, uh, this is a photograph I took of this in 1980, and then uh, in the last five years or so, this is more what it looks like. It's completely covered over by trees, to where, and, and there are uh, roads on either side of it. And you can drive right next to it and not know there's this concrete bridge in the midst of all of this underbrush. And you go in there, and it's just like this surreal scene. Uh, but I, I know for a fact from a story Ralph Fultz told me that uh, uh, he and Clyde Barrow drove across this bridge and through that system of uh, uh, roads and bridges in the Trinity River bottom. And the locals called it the back door there. So we go to the Ca Dallas County Courthouse and uh, the Continental S uh, Street Viaduct there. First, there's this story that Marie told me about her brother. Uh, she said, uh, Marie said she was a teenager at the time, um, and she's living uh, behind the, the filling station there on Eagle Ford Road. She wanted to go into downtown Dallas. She'd go out to the bus stop. There was a bus stop right in front of her, uh, the filling station, and she'd catch a bus into town. So one day, she said a friend of hers, uh, she and a friend of hers were waiting at the bus stop, and Bonnie and Clyde drove up and stopped and we're talking to her, and uh, uh, talked to her for a long time, her and her girlfriend there, and then uh, Clyde said, hop in, I'll, I'll take you to town. And so she got in, in the car, and, and at that point I asked Marie, I said, didn't you know how dangerous it was to be in the car with him? She said, oh no, hell no. I was too damn stupid to know, how, that's, that's how she talked. Hell no, I, didn't, I was too damn stupid. Anyway, so she and her, her friend uh, ride into town, I'll show you interesting photographs, interesting to me. This is a photograph of uh, downtown Dallas, obviously an aerial view. In 1934, when they were starting construction on what became Dealey Plaza uh, d down, downtown. But uh, you can see uh, the Commerce Street viaduct. This eventually was, was turned. It turns here and uh, goes straight to, uh, and splits off to Commerce, Maine, and Elm there. Uh, but th this was the main road. That's why on the uh, opposite side of the Trinity River is Commerce Street, because the bridge was from Commerce Street there. Anyway, so they drove across the Commerce uh, uh, Street bridge there and pulled up in front of the courthouse. And they sit there in front of the courthouse talking for the longest time before Marie and her friend get out. The whole country is looking for Bonnie and Clyde, and they're sitting in front of the Dallas County Courthouse. And then the Continental Street Viaduct, which still stands today, again, unless somebody's carted it off to Tyler. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, a pedestrian bridge now, uh, but when, when I took these photos, it, it, cars still drove on it. But uh, this uh, particular bridge is mentioned in one of Bonnie's poems, uh, and she refers to it as the West Dallas Viaduct. Uh, from Irving to West Dallas Viaduct is known as the Great Divide, where women are kin and men are men, and it's supposed to be men. You would think a writer like me could learn to spell, you know. Men are men, and they won't stool on Bonnie and Clyde. Newhoff Brothers, uh, this is a place that no longer exists anymore. In fact, Newhoff Brothers Meatpacking Plant, how many of you remember that? Yeah. Uh, it, it is located right where American Airlines Center is located now today. 
Uh, but in 1932, uh, Clyde Bell, Raymond Hamilton, and a friend of theirs named Ross Dyer decided to rob the payroll there. This is a, a photograph not long after this, this robbery. Uh, of downtown Dallas, and uh, this is Alamo Road right here. That's r right where Newhoff Meat Packing Plant was. Here's M Newhoff Meat Packing Plant, and they went in there and, and uh, uh, robbed the payroll uh, there on August 1st, 1932. Uh, when I was first researching um, uh, the facts for uh, eventually the the two books that I was involved with. Um, there was no Google or, or any internet. Um, in order to find witnesses, I, I actually went through phone books. And, and at first, I'd read newspaper uh, articles, uh, newspaper uh, uh, reporting, and I'd find names. And then I'd go through the city directory, see if I could find similar names. And there happened to be a woman named Elsie Wolschläger who worked in, at Newhoff. Uh, meat, meat packing plant, and I thought, well, that seems like an unusual name. I bet I can find a relative of hers. And so there were three Wolschleggers, and the first one I called, she was there. Uh, she had married, and ha it wasn't going by Wolschlegger anymore, but she was visiting one of her relatives there, and uh, she gave me uh, her viewpoint of the whole robbery, which was pretty interesting. And then I talked to Henry Newhoff, which was a trip in itself. Um, I tried to uh, uh, interview, uh, I'm sorry, not Henry, John Newhoff is who I interviewed. I tried to interview Henry, but uh, I got his wife, and she said, well, you don't know too much about the story because he's dead. And, and I, okay, and, uh, but she gave me his brother's phone number because uh, John and Henry and Elsie were in the office when this happened. And John Newhoff, it, it, he was uh, a no-nonsense fella. And uh, f first, to make him feel comfortable, we talked about fishing for about a half hour. And uh, finally, he was comfortable enough to talk to me about anything else, and I brought up this robbery. And he said, well, I was in the office that day when these three punks came in. And that's the way he put it. I mean, uh, he was not too pleased by the events that day. So um, there's also uh, this attempt to kill Bonnie and Clyde uh, out near Irving Mall, what's now Irving Mall. Uh, there used to be a little community called Sowers out there. And uh, it was there that uh, the Dallas County Sheriff and three deputies set up an ambush. Uh, it was going to be uh, the site of a family meeting. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde were going to meet members of their family there, right on what is now Airport Freeway. Uh, that road existed. It was a dirt road at the time, but it was 200 feet wide, and it was planned to eventually be a freeway of some kind. It was, the locals called it the North Fort Worth Pike. And uh, Bonnie and Clyde came uh, rolling up, and uh, the officers opened fire and uh, hit the car repeatedly, and that car just took off and disappeared into the night. Uh, the officers uh, were so convinced they were going to get Bonnie and Clyde, that they had parked more than a mile away. And so now they had watched the car drive off, and they had to walk a mile to get to their cars, and then back to Dallas. By the time they got to Dallas, newspaper extras were already on the street. And the newsboys, Floyd Hamilton told me this story. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a funny story. Floyd Hamilton said the newsboys were saying, read all about it, Sheriff escapes from Clyde Barrow. <laughs> well, we find out later that uh, Clyde Barrow and Bonnie both were hit, uh, shot through the knees uh, in this ambush, and their car was just blown apart uh, by these, this automatic weapons fire. But somehow or other, uh, they drove down Beltline freeway, which existed at the time, down to Grapevine, uh, Grand Prairie, and pulled right in front of the Naval Air Station, and pulled their car in front of an oncoming car, a car coming from Dallas, and they carjacked that car, and took off and disappeared into the night. Uh, the thing that's interesting about that, oh, here's the car, and you, if you look real close, you can see bullet holes all through the glass here. The, the car, by the way, the, the 
two men whose car was carjacked, they got in this car and drove it into Grand Prairie to uh, tell authorities they had been carjacked. So this car was still running. Uh, at least one of the tires was flat too, but they, they, they drove it into, uh, into Grand Prairie there. Um, so uh, th these are the four guys. This is Sheriff Sh Smoot Schmidt, uh, Ed uh, Castor, uh, Ted Hinton, and Bob Alcorn. These two guys would be in, in part of the ambush team in Louisiana that killed Bonnie and Clyde uh, the next year. Uh, and then, of course, uh, some of the things recovered from the car here, detective magazines, and multiple li license plates from multiple different states. Uh, that's what uh, Barrow would do. He would steal license plates and keep a dozen or more license plates in the car, and he'd change them out frequently. And then, uh, wh where Bonnie and Clyde drove and carjacked that car, you can still find a remnant of that old road. It was part of a system of, of roadway that went from Washington, D.C. all the way to Los Angeles. And it was called the Bankhead Highway. It's considered the first interstate highway that was funded by the U.S. government. Uh, and it's named after a senator that uh, helped bring about the funding there. Uh, so the bank, a remnant of that Bankhead Highway that Brian and Clyde would have used that night can be seen and, and it complete with these concrete bridges again. Uh, if you're ever uh, driving on West Davis and you're heading west and you cross Walton Walker Freeway, Loop 12, as soon as you cross that freeway, you're still on, on West Davis. Um, uh, you, you go past the QT, and there are these businesses on the right. You get about halfway between that QT and Grand Prairie itself and start looking on the right. You'll see a service road right below you, but look beyond that, and you'll start to see these bridges and remnants of that old road sitting out there. And that's the old Bankhead Highway, and, and Bonnie and Clyde escaped on that road after carjacking that car that night. Lancaster, um, down in uh, the southern part of the county, was the scene of this bank robbery uh, in, uh, in February 1934. Um, uh, the R.P. Henry Bank was uh, hit by Barrow and Hamilton and Henry Methvin and they got $4,100 uh, from that. So uh, these three characters uh, pulled off this bank robbery there and, uh, uh, and made their way out. And then, of course, eventually Bonnie and Clyde are ambushed and killed, and uh, their bodies are brought back to Dallas County. Uh, Clyde's funeral is at Sparkman Holtz Brand, which is, uh, uh, was the old Belo Mansion, and today is uh, a, 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 a legal, uh, agency is still still the same building there on Ross Avenue, and uh, Clyde was interred at Western Heights uh, Cemetery. Uh, th these are scenes from the time of the funeral. You can see the the hearse and the family cars and the crowds. Estimated 10,000 or more people crowded around the building. Uh, uh, Buddy Barrow, who's out there, he can tell you stories that his father L.C. told him about. Uh, this funeral there. Uh, some of them are kind of uh, maddening. Uh, this is a photograph uh, that's really interesting to me. Uh, not only does it show uh, all of the people all around there, but uh, it, down here at the corner is a guy doing business. He's selling ice cream. It was a really hot day that day. It's one of my favorite photos of this whole thing. And then uh, uh, his uh, uh, Barrow is buried right next to his brother, Marvin, who is known uh, better as Buck Barrow. And uh, the, the, uh, the headstone is buried in concrete because it kept getting stolen, especially on, on Texas OU weekend. And the last time it was stolen, uh, I happened to be at Marie Barrow's house when she got a phone call from the uh, sheriff, Dallas County Sheriff, said he had located the thing. It had been stolen and he had located it. Um, a Dallas County politician was using it as a coffee table for a Texas OU party. And M Murray said, uh, I'm going to go get it. And, and I, could, I could actually hear the sheriff on the other uh, and, 
please don't go get it. Let me go get it. Please let me go get it. So he got it, and after that, they buried it in this concrete down here. Uh, I, I go uh, there uh, from time to time, and there's always something different there. Uh, visitors always leave things. Not all visitors, but uh, some visitors leave things. There's often live ammunition all over the, the headstone there. And uh, money, uh, I find all kinds of money. Sometimes poker hands are laid out there. Uh, usually dead man's hand and other things. Uh, th this photograph which was taken about 50 years ago, actually. Uh, this photograph uh, uh, just has some simple flowers around it, but this is a more recent photograph that shows these shotgun shells and all this money. Uh, sometimes there's toy saxophones because Clyde played saxophone and the like. So uh, now uh, Bonnie's uh, uh, journey uh, uh, through her funeral is a little bit more complex. Um, uh, her funeral was at McKamey Camel uh, on Forest Avenue. Forest Avenue now is called Martin Luther King Boulevard. And that building no longer exists, whereas the old Sparkman Holtz brand funeral homes, that building still exists. Um, so she was, uh, 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 the funeral was at, uh, on Forest Avenue uh, near Fair Park. And then she was interred first at Fish Trap Cemetery. And uh, I love this sign here, uh, Fish Trap for white only, burial permission, and uh, Santieri. And uh, uh, of course, the, the uh, La Reunion Cemetery is still there. But this part of the cemetery was condemned in 1945 to make way for housing, because uh, there was, uh, and so uh, Bonnie's sister, uh, Billy had to move uh, Bonnie and her mother and her, her own two children that died in a, a flu epidemic, epidemic, had to move them. And so the, the bodies were moved in 1945 to Crown Hill Memorial Cemetery. So it's a little more complex, uh, this story here. And so, uh, and it's the same thing at, at, at Bonnie's grave. First of all, her marker is embedded in concrete also because it kept getting stolen. Um, it, it, but uh, I've, we find all kinds of things. Here's a, a, a lawman's badge, um, toy lawman's badge, police badge, toy guns, lots of toy guns there, um, uh, lots of makeup. Uh, here's another one. Uh, for some reason, Crown Royal, Canadian whiskey. Of course, cigars, because she's photographed uh, uh, mugging with that cigar. Uh, which she later said she hated that photograph. She was just goofing around. That was actually W.D. Jones' cigar. Uh, and uh, Clyde and W.D. Jones were mugging like they were big shots. And then she decided she wanted to act like a big shot, too. And then money. All, all, you name it, there's something, something always there. I, so I always photograph these things. Here, here's uh, two little orange pistols. And uh, of course, that cemetery is still there, and Western Heights Cemetery is still there. But slowly but surely, all these sites are kind of disappearing, even though the geographic place on Earth still exists there. And that, in a nutshell, is Bonnie and Clyde in, in Dallas County.